my name is Holly Loheis, and I'm a marine biologist and naturalist. I work with Jean-Michel Cousteau and his Ocean Future Society's Marine Conservation Organization here in Santa Barbara. But I also work for the Santa Barbara Maritime Museum as well as Island Packers, the boat concession out to the Channel Islands National Park. I actually started my career as a marine naturalist, marine educator right here at the Sea Center back in 1991. We're really lucky to have this incredible body of water offshore of the Santa Barbara Channel. The Pacific gray whales depend on our healthy marine environment as they migrate through. Gray whales are the one large baleen whales that has really successfully been able to rebound from the whaling era. We also, of course, have one of the highest diversity of whales and dolphins and porpoise in the Santa Barbara Channel. So it's such an incredible place to jump on one of the local boats and head out across the channel looking for whale spouts from the largest animal on the planet ever, the blue whale. We also have humpback whales and there's definitely more humpback whales today than when I started working out on the whale watching boats back in the early 90s. And in just the last few days, being on the island packer boats, heading out to the Channel Islands National Park and the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary, we had sightings of three different species of baleen whales. So blue whales, fin whales, and humpback whales. So what an incredible place to really learn about whales, to appreciate their resiliency. We brought these whale populations to the brink of extinction without even understanding the significance of the role that they play. We are starting to really appreciate and to research the instrumental role they play in helping to mitigate the impacts of climate change. And there's two ways they do that. It's through their fecal matter, which is a fancy word for the whale poop. Basically, they're almost like farmers or gardeners where they're adding fertilizer to the surface waters to enhance the growth of plankton. These tiny little plant plankton take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere through the process of photosynthesis. And just like we need to protect our rainforest because they absorb so much CO2 in the process of photosynthesis, well, the whales are stimulating the growth of phytoplankton and they're doing the exact same thing, helping to take that CO2 out of the atmosphere where it is no longer a damaging greenhouse gas and causing our planet to warm. The second way that whales are instrumental in taking a lot of this carbon pollution out of the atmosphere, they're taking in carbon and it's staying stored within their body. So upon their death, as the carcass sinks to the deeper depths of the ocean, and it's taking that carbon with it and it's keeping it down in the ocean, and we call that an ocean sink. As we celebrate the comeback of the great whales around the world, it doesn't mean they're completely out of trouble today. In fact, right now we are experiencing with the gray whales what's called a UME, an unusual mortality event. This happened 20 years ago where we lost about a third of the gray whales in about a three to four year period. And we've been experiencing the same drastic drop in numbers in just the last three to four years too. A very big concern, of course, here specifically in the Santa Barbara Channel is ship strikes. We have right offshore international shipping lanes, and these shipping lanes actually traverse areas for feeding blue whales and humpback whales. There's been an ongoing, wonderful collaborative work between the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary and the shipping companies and the different agencies. Of course, a lot of this is, is also being done by UC Santa Barbara. With an acoustic array underwater, there could be a great way to alert the captains to please slow down. Of course, another huge concern is noise pollution. These whales are depending on sounds, traveling great distances, increasing noise of boat pollution and seismic testing and exploring for oil reserves, all has a potential impact on the hearing ability of whales. 
There's a lot of unanswered questions about our changing planet and the impact on cetaceans, or whales and dolphins. Of course, it's a concern for the gray whales because they're an Arctic feeder. And we know that the impacts of climate change are happening at a much faster rate up at the higher latitudes of the Arctic. We know they're an incredibly resilient species. It does give me a sense of hope that as we engage more people in our local coastal communities, we attract an international audience to come and appreciate what we have in our own backyard. I think it gives everybody the motivation and the inspiration to think of their own personal environmental footprint and what they could do to support healthy ocean habitats for the whales. Working with Jean-Michel Cousteau, his late father, Jacques Cousteau, used to always say, people protect what they love. And Jean-Michel Cousteau continues that statement by saying, well, how can we protect what we don't fully understand? So the best way to really appreciate these beautiful, awesome animals is to jump on one of the local whale watching boats and to go see for yourself. I think a person has changed forever if they see a 30-foot spout of a blue whale Supporting sustainable seafood is so important to understand where your seafood is harvested, how, what method it is caught, and to really support those fisher folks that are doing everything they can to sort of minimize a bycatch or any degradation to the environment that they're fishing from. Another really important thing we all could improve on, including myself, is to minimize our use of single-use plastic. A lot of this plastic ends up in the ocean. Removing plastics from our everyday life is huge effort for the ocean and for the whales. This area is so healthy and productive that it attracts a high diversity of whales. We need to let our local politicians know that and remind them of that so policies are put in place from an environmental perspective. One of the most recent projects to really bring awareness to the significance of this area as an outstanding place to go whale watching and to learn about the diversity of whales, dolphins, and porpoise is what's called a whale heritage site. There are five designated whale heritage sites around the world, and this is all under the World Cetacean Alliance. A whale heritage site designation here in the Santa Barbara Channel would really raise the awareness and most importantly, really highlight all the great ways we could continue to celebrate the whales here in Santa Barbara and along the South Coast. I've had the immense privilege to travel all over the planet and explore the ocean. Every time I have an opportunity to get on a boat, I see things right here of the Santa Barbara Channel. Behavior which I've never seen before. Every time you go out there, you see things different. Because Santa Barbara is the best place to go and look at whales, understand what they do, the time of the year that certain species come. So protect that place to make sure that the whales are continuing to have the life that they need and the privilege for us to watch them.